Hey everybody, Julie Bogart here from Brave Writer. I am excited to chat with you this afternoon. Uh, I thought I would hop on. We haven't done a Facebook Live in a long time, and I thought it might be a good chance for you to ask questions. We are super excited around here. January marks the 20th anniversary of Brave Writer. 20 years. It's a good thing, really, because I started in January of 2000, and I always think how lucky I am that that is the month I began, because I never forget it. I am not great with numbers, but that nice round January 2000 will always stick in my brain. Uh, we were obviously in process before 2000. I actually wrote The Writer's Jungle during 1999, I had been speaking in small group settings uh, in California and Ohio before the launch of our programs in January of 2000. But here's how we began. I was active early on the internet. I like to make a joke that right at the moment that the doors of the internet opened, all the homeschoolers just rushed right in because we were desperate for connection. We did not have this kind of opportunity for chatting across the Mississippi. I lived in LA and I had no idea what homeschoolers were doing in New York. So when the internet opened its doors, homeschooling mothers thought, now's the opportunity for me to find out if what I'm doing is what other people are doing, if what I'm doing makes sense. And so we gathered around these little fire pits of discussion boards that helped us get a sense of the innovation that we could bring to our own home education experience. What were other people doing? And I discovered quite early and quite quickly that the way I approached writing as a professional was very different than the way a lot of my homeschooling colleagues approached it as educators. And that rift, that difference, was the birthplace of Brave Writer. I started discovering that when I shared about processes like free writing and how to support a child who's reluctant in writing and how to create the kind of relationship between parent and child uh, that fosters writing, how that transformed so many aspects of the parent-child dynamic. It not only facilitated writing growth, it actually laid a foundation for the way home educators discuss writing and discuss homeschooling. For instance, now it is pretty acceptable to talk about collaborating and partnering with your child in a way that was not as apparent in the late 1990s. In other words, the driving aim of so much of homeschooling in those early years was how to make our children more independent of us. But the model that I established for writing, where the parent comes alongside and provides the corresponding support to the presenting need, has sort of dovetailed now out into a whole philosophy of education in homeschooling. And it's not to say I'm the first person or the only person to have pointed that out. What I'm saying is there's been a groundswell of changed attitudes about what home education can look like. You know, no more is it just hand your child one of those, you know, newsprint style workbooks and then they check in with you at lunch. There is a sense of shared journey around writing and around learning that is the model that we have been living for over 20 years now as a community. So thank you for your congratulations. Thanks for joining me live. If you want to post where you're tuning in from, that's always fun for me to get a sense of how big our audience is. One of the cool things about Brave Writer is that it is a global network. We've got families tuning in from Egypt and Thailand and New Zealand and Japan, as well as Alaska, Hawaii, the continental US, Europe like France and UK and Germany. We have families tuning in from India. Back when we started, I could not foresee this, but here's what's really cool. When we began, my vision for Brave Writers website was to represent the writing experience by thinking about the whole globe. We were going to have little like countries, one for you know grammar, one for spelling, one for composition. And it was because I've always seen writing 
as a big geographical territory. Writing isn't just a task to be mastered. It is the integration of multiple skills that come together to form a final product. So if you think about writing, we're not just teaching our kids, you know, how to move a pen or how to type on a keyboard. We're not just teaching them how to spell. We're not just teaching them how to write for academics the way they might in college. We are preparing them for the 21st century's most prolific form of communication across continents. More human beings are writing today than in the history of the world. More children are writing for publication today than in the history of the world. And when I say publication, I literally mean Facebook status updates, text messages, tweets. Anytime you commit your own thoughts to writing and share it with an interested audience, you're a published writer. And today, the reach of those tweets, those short messages, those blog posts, those comments on Reddit is global. No more does the classroom instructor have to make up a student paper dittoed off for students in that school as a pretend way to publish. Publishing is integral to writing now and they happen simultaneously and your children already know it instinctively. They already know that it's more exciting to test drive your ideas in a discussion thread on an online gaming site than to write a report for their mother and have it go live in the homeschooling tomb in the back of the closet, right? They already know that they want to spell accurately when they're chatting in their online gaming or fan fiction discussion boards because they don't want to look foolish or uneducated. I'll never forget Liam shouting at me from, you know, back there at the computer saying, mom, how do you spell? And then I said, well, why are you asking? And he says, well, I don't want to look like an idiot in this online chat. That's the difference between the way some of you grew up, how I grew up, and the way your children are growing up. So how do we equip them for this sort of landmine territory of writing online? How do we help them grow the skills to be thoughtful about their ideas? How to write as opposed to rant? You know, there's a lot of online ranting. We always say in our essay classes, we want an essay that you write. Essay writing, not essay ranting, right? We are helping our kids grow so that the kind of communication that they put out into the world is a couple fold. And let me just go through it for you because this is pedagogical. These are the concepts that your kids want to internalize as they move through their academic years for the first 12 years of their lives and then as they move into adulthood after they leave your home. So those 12 years of education between you know age six and 18, followed by college and then career or directly into a career. What kind of communicator do you want? What kind of language represents them in a genuine, articulate way? So what we teach in Brave Writer and the things that we share about have to do with that rich inner landscape of language, but not just how well you imitate someone or how well you use copy work or how well you diagram a sentence. I'm interested in the mind life of your children. I'm interested in the way they think and how they form those thoughts and how they evaluate those thoughts and how they think about their own thinking. What gets triggered when they hear an idea that either affirms what they already know or challenges what they thought they believed? What gets stirred up? What language have they been trained to use that combats that feeling of either superiority or anxiety about maybe being wrong. Because it's that moment, that cognitive moment, that crossroads between what they believe and know to be true and what's being brought online for them to consider that is going to determine whether or not they are effective communicators in the 21st century. 
just pause and take that in for a minute. It's so easy to focus on how to get into college. But is that really the goal? Or is getting into college just one of the steps on the path to being a thoughtful, articulate, written communicator? Somebody who can write the report, answer the email, show up in conversation online with thoughtfulness, fully self-aware of when they're being triggered, how to avoid triggering others, how to create a culture of thoughtful communication, not just, you know, doubling down on how superior my ideas are to yours. How do we engage in the kind of writing that is transformative, both for the writer and the reader? And the goal cannot be simply crushing people with bullying language, right? We see so much of that online these days. And yet in that academic portfolio that you are building for your child needs to be an awareness of their own cognitive growth, their own mind life, the way that they engage with ideas. And we use writing to help them go on that journey. So if you start all the way back, like with a five to eight year old level in Brave Writers online classes, for instance, we start with a class called Story Switcheroo. And let me just describe to you how that class prepares your child for an adult life of writing. Did you ever realize it? You know, sometimes we have parents come to us and they say, okay, Story Switcheroo, that's a cute creative writing class. Okay, now my child might take write for fun. That's a fun creative writing class. But when does Brave Writer get serious about writing? I get that a lot. People think those classes can't have anything to do with what's coming down the pike for them. But I'm here to challenge that thinking. In Story Switcheroo, here is what your child is going to be introduced to by the instructor. And you will be in that class with your child. You are a vital member of that class because five to eight year olds are not typically reading fluently and typing or writing fluently yet. So here's what will happen. They're going to read a variety of fairy tale versions of a single fairy tale and then a variety of versions of another fairy tale. And they are going to get to know what we call in literature tropes. Those characteristics that show up in fairy tales that make a story a fairy tale, not just some story, right? So you are examining literature for its native characteristics, the things that make that genre a specific genre. Then your kids are going to analyze with you the story arc, what drives the story forward, what makes that story powerful to read, something we want to get to the end of that causes us to guess what's going to happen. We're going to learn about climax and narrative arc and the role of the characters in those stories. And we're doing it from a diverse group. You know, have you been to college? <laughs> they ask you, maybe you've been to high school if you haven't been to college, and you are asked to write a paper. What are you asked to do? You have to look at multiple sources, and then you have to take those insights that you glean and synthesize them to generate something new, to make a contribution to the way that we understand that topic. Well, in Story Switcheroo, your kids are going to examine multiple sources. They're going to take in the characteristics of that genre. And then they are going to offer something new. They're going to switcheroo elements of the story to generate a new narrative. Ladies and gentlemen, that is College 101 happening between the five and eight-year-old level. Because the properties of thought that create great thinkers start then. So you might sign up for a class like Write for Fun, where we have students take an old nursery rhyme and update it to the 21st century. They're doing the same thing. They're examining the properties of what a a nursery rhyme is. They are thinking about the difference between the context, the historical and social economic context of that original nursery rhyme. And then they are now updating it to the 21st century. They are transforming it. They are thinking about 
this social and political and economic context, this technological context. And they are swapping the old historical context for the present one. That is some skill. This is not just playing around with language. This is actually growing the brain. Can you isolate which characteristics come from a, another time and which characteristics signify this time? That's powerful. As a history major, let me just tell you, that is what it means to be a historian, to be able to see historical contexts and analyze them and understand them and to apply them. Make sense? So if you look at our classes, starting with something like Story Switcheroo, you might look at Skip Into Science, where we are walking students through how to create a scientific project using writing. And I'm going to open that one just to read you the description, because someone asked me about it earlier this morning, and I was rereading the description. You know, I've been in these over and over, but it's been a little while. I thought, God, this is an amazing class. So week one, they start by teaching your kids to ask like a scientist. Question everything. The world won't look the same once you observe and probe with the razor sharp focus of a scientist on the hunt for knowledge and meaning. Now, this is different than saying, here's how we're going to write a three paragraph report about a scientific topic. Pick a topic, come up with a research angle, find some supports, start with a topic sentence. No, we're gonna start week one by stirring up curiosity. Isn't that the academic life? Isn't that what follows high school and college? It's the ability to be curious, to observe and probe with razor sharp focus. You know, I always joke, your kids will go off to college and they'll major in something really sophisticated like chemistry and you'll be so proud of them. And then they're gonna go get a job. And you know what it will be? Redesigning the shampoo formula for Pantene for Procter & Gamble. What we are training our kids to do is imminently practical. The skills that they're going to bring into that workspace, however, are not just whether they can master chemical formula, but can they think like a scientist and ask the probing questions and discover what might bring new insight into that space. Week two, they ask you to think like a science scientist. And so now we're gonna talk about how to do research and note taking, how to look at a feast of resources. Sound familiar? Didn't we do that in Story Switcheroo? Seeing a variety of fairy tales. Now as a scientist, we're gonna look at a variety of source materials for science. Don't we do that for history in penning the past? We have to go back and look at historical records to really understand the historical context before you can write a fan fiction piece of historical fiction. Week three in Skip Into Science, we talk about playing like a scientist. This is the experimental week, the research week, the figuring out what are those things I'm learning and proving to myself. And then finally, Week four, share like a scientist, taking all those aspects that you've learned over four weeks and putting it into a kind of project, whether that's going to be some kind of a report form or a lap book or a YouTube presentation. However you determine is the best way to communicate about that using writing. Why am I sharing all this with you in Facebook? Because I think there is a mistaken notion that writing is simply about five paragraph formats, about assembling appropriate paragraphs. But that is not the core of writing. Writing a paragraph is just not that difficult. You mostly speak in them, you read them every day, you think in categories of thought. That's where paragraphing came from. It came from organizing your thoughts into these digestible bits. That is pretty low level instruction for writing. Going into a class whose first lesson is what is a topic sentence is a bit of low level teaching. I'm not saying there isn't value to having a topic and organizing around it, but anyone who's worked in journalism or who's worked as a professional writer knows that you want to bury the lead. 
you want to start with something of interest and save the punchline for later in the paragraph or maybe even in the paper. Or you want the lead to be provocative like an essay thesis where you don't quite know where you stand. We are drawn forward in writing by curiosity, by not knowing the end at the beginning, by finding ourselves hungering to know. So all of our classes are built from this frame of reference. We ask ourselves a simple question when we design a class. How does this advance a student's development into a rigorous academic thinker and writer? And every class keeps that in mind. So what are some of those skills? Well, one of them is the digesting of diverse source material, being exposed to multiple sources, having to sift through multiple perspectives to find the bits of information that have landed with you, that you can synthesize, interpret, digest, and then re-deliver in your own unique, fresh way with an interested audience. So that's one of our first primary principles. Another one is freedom to explore and play. We don't assume that you already know what you want to write about or even the angle you want to take. We spend time ginning up the internal cognitive powers. Our goal is for your kids to think new thoughts, to discover that they have thoughts and ideas they didn't even know were there until they started writing. If you are a professional writer, you can attest to this, I'm sure. Many times I will be in the shower or out on a long run and I start writing something in my head, a blog post, an Instagram caption, a paper for grad school. And I get very involved in my own thinking. I'm actually kind of proud of the thinking I'm doing and proud of the writing I'm about to do. And then I get home and I open a Word document <laughs> and it goes away. The thing I thought that I thought is less clear once I start writing. And when I start writing, I suddenly discover what I really think. In fact, sometimes I discover things I haven't even thought yet because there is something about committing to the page that allows you to become a more thoughtful thinker. So what we're doing in Brave Writer in every class, when you get into our essay classes, you will see it. There are processes that help unlock the thoughts you didn't even know you had yet. A great example of that would be our Writer's Jungle online class, which by the way is only on sale for two weeks, celebrating our 20 year anniversary, $20 off each student. So Hop in there if you've never taken it. This is your one and only chance for a discount. But in that class, one of the very early activities is what we call keen observation of an item. So you might have, you know, a cup of hot chocolate, and we're going to ask your child about 45 different questions that help them process all of this silent information they're getting when they're drinking. We're going to ask them to look at it from above. We're going to ask them to compare the color between the marshmallows floating and the liquid underneath, and how the marshmallows change color when they start soaking up the hot chocolate. We're gonna ask them to taste it on the tip of their tongue and the back of their tongue. We're gonna ask them to grab your 64 pack of Crayola crayons and see if there is a color that has a more nuanced name that matches, that's a little more specific than the word brown or tan. We're going to ask them to smell it with their noses and feel it with a finger and a tongue, and is there a difference in those textures? This is how you grow insight. All that information lives inside your child right now, and they don't know to draw it out. They don't even know the questions to ask themselves. Part of what we do then in Brave Writer is we help you, their primary writing coaches, to become more effective interrogator. <laughs> interrogators, that's the word I'm looking for, so that they develop the self-interrogation -inter tools they need to grow. So how does this look at the high school level? Well, instead of talking about items, keenly observing items, we start keenly observing their thoughts, their ideas, social issues. What are their prejudices? What are their loyalties? What are their hunches? What's the rhetoric they've always heard? What is the other side saying that triggers them and makes them feel emotional? Because without paying attention to all that, you're essay ranting. 
you won't be essay writing. It's not enough just to take a position and then hunt and peck around the internet looking for evidence to support your claim. We have to grapple with the things that contradict your claim, the charges from the other side that you really hate and disagree with. We have to dispassionately weigh those, consider them, and allow that to show up in our student writing. So when you join a Brave Writer class, what you are doing is not just teaching your kids what writing is, you are helping them understand how to think like a writer. You are actually growing them into academically minded people who aren't just social media ranting, but are thoughtful, intelligent, articulators of ideas, holding them gently, maybe with conviction, but without that sort of hubris that undermines the capacity to keep growing. There is a difference, I like to say, between apologetics and academics, and there is a place for both. But when we are looking at the academic task, when we are growing people into mature thinkers who will be in colleges all across America, entering the workplace in all different industries, what we want to learn how to be is thoughtful about our ideas and capable of interacting with those we don't support without going into a rant. And that's what Brave Writer teaches. So if that's what you're looking for, well, join us. We have opened the online registration for today. Today is our first day of opening it for winter and spring of 2020. As I said, the Writer's Jungle Online is $20 off for two weeks only. If those courses fill up, then they fill up. So hop in early. We've already sold out the MLA research essay. That one is full, but we have lots of other classes and some of them may be full by the end of the day. First day is always a big day for us. Uh, but we really hope that you will join us for this writing experience. You won't be sorry. The feedback that we get from our families is exceptional. We take all critiques seriously and improve our classes with those critiques in mind. And what we have right now is just this highly trained, effective staff of writing coaches who know your journey. They are homeschoolers and professional writers, every last one of them. And they are there to hold your hand. This is not just, here's an assignment, a couple office hours a week. Oh no, our teachers are available from the day class opens till the day it ends whenever you need them. You can ask any question at any time. They have been trained to respond to you within a day or two so that you do not have to wait. And they give you deep reader-oriented feedback. They say things like, wow, that paragraph really drew me in. I find myself asking this question. I love the use of this language. It reminds me of onomatopoeia. This was a clever way to communicate that. What about this? It's not vague, squiggle underline. Passive voice, question mark. That's not it. We are not using English teacher red line feedback. This is detailed conversation with your child or you about your child's writing. And it is compassionate, kind, and designed to grow the writing not to correct the writing, but to grow it. Your kids will experience having the power of making their writing better without feeling like they were invalidated before they took the risk to grow it. Does that make sense? So thank you for joining me today. I'm going to scroll for a moment and see if you had any questions. Uh, Fazila says, my middle school student has never used Brave Writer, however, I would like to get him started with online classes. If you have a middle school student who likes writing or is competent at writing, you can start with middle school writing projects or something like writing your own Greek myth or uh, telling a tale or write for fun. These are all classes they could do on their own. Skip into science. If, however, your middle school student is a reluctant writer or has not had a lot of experience for writing, start with the Writer's Jungle Online. That will enroll you and your child together, and you will be guided into this wonderful writing editing dynamic between the two of you, and you'll both lay a foundation for all future writing. We always recommend starting with the Writer's Jungle Online. If your kids are under 12, 
or if they are 11, 12, 13, 14, and are reluctant or have not had success with writing. And that's the one that's on sale. Let's see. We are using partnership writing with our fourth, fifth, and sixth graders this year at our co-op. It is so amazing. The timelines that our kids made were so beautiful. Oh, thank you. I cannot wait till the new year and new projects. That is so good to hear. Partnership writing is a product you can purchase in our store, and it is designed for self-study. Let's see, Desiree says, I love how with homeschooling, instead of separating all these different elements of education into different standards and activities, we wrap them into more succinct and meaningful processes. Yes, so much more about learning as an educator, how to analyze the work that you have done and discovering how much more rich uh, and rich many activities than we initially realized. Very nice. Uh, let's see. Um, those are Christmas lights behind me. Uh, let's see. I love seeing where you're all coming in from, New Hampshire, Tennessee, West Virginia, Texas. How great. What would be a good starter class for a first grader? Story Switcheroo. That is our most popular. There is also Telling Tales, which is the same thing but using folk tales. So it's just a matter of, nurse, um, of fairy tales versus folk tales. Just pick the one that would be more appealing to your child. That's perfect. Yep. I love what you just said. We need more people everywhere that are able to digest information from all ang angles and own their position. Yes, it's challenging for all of us. I mean, if it's challenging for adults, imagine how it is for kids. The goal that I think I have in Brave Writer that for me transcends just the task of writing is for us to recognize that we are growing thinkers. We cannot master all the information that is available to be mastered. The total information mass that all of humanity has accumulated over 21 centuries or more, obviously, if you include ancient history, doubles every 12 hours. That's what I've read. I don't believe it, but it sounds staggering. Even if it was every 12 days, it would be staggering. We cannot master all information. What we want to train our kids to be is skilled thinkers, people who can engage with whatever information they receive and know how to do peer reviewed research, how to look at a diversity of points of view, how to own their own point of view and their own emotional triggers when they hear information that contradicts what they believe is absolutely true. We want them to be able to put that into language that is accessible and clear and relevant and it can own their position without using bullying tactics or ranting tactics to discuss the other side or other positions. And we want breakthrough insight where after digesting and examining themselves and examining others, they come to a new set of questions, not just a dead end of answers, but what are things we haven't considered? I was spending some time the other night researching something from when I was in college. Um, I was totally fascinated by how my history professors would not tell us what to think, but they would lead us to do reading, which challenged the status quo. That's what we're talking about here. Uh, Desiree, or let's see, Angie asks, her son is worried about sharing in front of other students. He's embarrassed by his writing level. Let me share something with you that will blow your mind. First of all, if you take a class like the Writer's Jungle Online, none of the kids will be in that class. It's all parents working with the instructor, sharing their children's writing. It creates a completely safe space for kids because kids aren't reading each other's work. It's instructor and parent dialoguing about that child's work and you get to decide what you read back to your child. Now, what we've found is that they can't wait to share with the instructors because the instructors are such brilliant, supportive coaches. It's like having your favorite coach for soccer practice. It's not someone who shames you, it's someone who empowers you to be more effective at scoring the goal. That's what that space feels like. In the classes where parents aren't present, what you will discover, what your children will discover is that the space is so honoring, so not shaming, so not niggling over small details like spelling or punctuation, 
that they start to see themselves as a child in a journey of growing as a writer and they will discover there are other kids who are at their level maybe even older than them that's super common any parent who's been worried about that has come back to me and said that their child actually enjoyed sharing their writing in the brave writer context would writers jungle online be a good fit for a third grader with disabilities like dyslexia a hundred percent in fact, Rita Savasco from Rooted in Language, our expert on dyslexia and all reading struggles, found that the Writer's Jungle Online was better at teaching writing to kids with those special needs than any of the tools they use in traditional special ed. And that's because they have not thought through the writing process for those kids. They are so fixated on reading and the physical act of writing they have not yet done the kind of work that needs to be done on writing process. I had the same experience at Xavier University where I teach as an adjunct professor. They have a master's program and an undergrad for Montessori. And I was hanging out with those professors and they were staggered by the way we teach writing. And one of those professors said to me, you know what's weird? The way you teach writing is the way we teach math. But for some reason, no one has recognized that writing can be taught this way. What we do in Brave Writer is that unique, that even Montessori doesn't teach it the way we teach it. And that's because I'm just bringing in this professional perspective about writing. And for some reason, that just seems more able to connect with writers of all ages, adults and children. So definitely start with, um, Definitely start with the Writer's Jungle Online. There's Maura Kren, I can never say your last name. Maura, I'm so sorry. She's Rita Savasco's daughter who's married and she is on the team from Rooted in Language. And if you have more questions about reading and the act of writing and want a seamless sort of experience of how to do original writing and how to do that reading piece, check out Rooted in Language. Rita's team does a phenomenal job. Uh, Maura, go ahead and post the link so people can go there directly. Uh, but they are just as powerful. Uh, and they have their own sort of Black Friday, Cyber Monday sales going on right now. So make sure you go check them out. Any other questions about writing classes? Today's the day. So uh, join us, sign up, go to class.bravewriter.com slash register. Or you can simply go to bravewriter.com slash online dash classes, and that will get you there. We love helping you, so feel free to send us a message in the helpline or post comments and questions here, and we promise to answer them. Thank you for joining me today. Happy holidays, and I hope that we see you in an online class in 2020.